Okay, there you are. <laughs> okay. Yes. Oh goodness, uh, Joyce, it's a, it's an amazing honor to be able to speak to you uh, as uh, this at uh, this time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh no. Um. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm based out here in the UK, but um, we do have. Oh. Yeah, I'm so based. So it's about ten at night over here, but which is okay. always good. <laughs> um, but we do have an international audience, and so I always like to find out, start with asking my guests where they were born and raised, so that our international audience can sort of get us a, a sense of where things were in the map. Well, I was born and raised in New York, in Western New York, called a uh, city called Rochester, New York. Okay, and um, yeah. I mean, was was it very heavily influenced in, in 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 music? Because most of us internationally would know of Harlem and Brooklyn and areas like that, but not much about Rochester. Right. Well, so <laughs> Rochester is known for the Eastman School of Music. So um, that's a very prestigious, you know, music school for uh, you know opera, classical music different things like that. And like Eastman Kodak, it was more like back then when I was still living in Rochester industry, but the Eastman School of Music was like a big music school in Rochester. Is, well, well, there still is. is yeah. Is, is that where did you go? Is that where you went to? No, I didn't. I studied at, well, I took private lessons and then I studied theory, music theory at Nazareth College. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, going back, growing up in Rochester, I mean, what was your sort of musical influence, especially as a as a young as a child? Well, I, you know, I grew up singing in the, in the choir. You know, most back then we didn't have American Idol and you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is it, the America's the best, voice all and, these different the voice, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have that. So you know, the church. So I grew up singing in the church choir, the youth choir. Then, you know, um, going up to the adult choir. But yeah, my background started in the church. And um, from there, I started writing poetry. And um, I just always wanted to be a singer songwriter. I was more into writing than anything else. I just love writing. And uh, so I started, I studied piano. And um, from there, um, you know, I just started putting the lyrics and the music together. And and I remember my first piano, well, my first organ. Actually, I started out playing an organ. Okay. And I begged and pleaded my parents, please, please, please give me this organ. So they finally did. Wow. But yeah, so I started out actually taking organ lessons. So, you know, I think that really influenced my sound because playing an organ you're like chording with your left hand, you're playing the melody with your right hand, and you're playing the bass line with your feet. Wow. Yeah, so the coordination had to be really there. So, yeah, you know, and then I picked up, you know, just singing as well. So I, I guess it was a different way to go, but, yeah, that was that's how I got started. Who, who was around that you were influenced by? I mean... Well, so... As I grew older, you know, the Jackson Five was a big influence on me. Oh. Um, Shaka Khan, as I, you know, grew older, and and uh, um, Stevie Wonder, you know, I really admire Stevie Wonder. I love Stevie Wonder, and um, I, you know, he really inspired me to want to play and sing at the same time. Uh -huh. He was a big influence on me. I mean, and and I mean, I know we know uh, we've recently seen that Aretha was very good at playing and and singing. But mm -hmm. how common was it seeing females playing and singing when you were growing up and and thinking about the Korean music? Well, the only place I saw it was in the church. You know, the oh. choir director, okay, someone you know playing and singing, directing the choir. You know, yeah. so that was the only place I saw it at the you know when I was growing up. But, but then you do, but it was still you went to, uh, uh, you didn't think, okay, you know, I know Stevie does it and Ray Charles, but okay, you know, uh, I mean, now we see Elisa Keys and we and it doesn't oh, seem yeah. as a come, but back in those days, yeah. we, it was Stevie and Ray, but not mm -hmm. as and a few others, but it wasn't that prevalent. So you didn't think it might seem odd playing and singing? Oh, no, 
I, okay, as we have a thunderstorm rumble. Oh, okay. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> yeah, I just did it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, I, I didn't think anything of it because, I mean, I had a song. Somebody had to sing it. So, yeah. you know, I did, and it came, it seemed like it came so natural for me to, um, you know, play the song and sing the song. You know, because I started, I really wanted to write for other people. And I would, um, uh, you know, take it, you know, have them listen to my song. I would write, a, you know, a little do, a little demo and what have you. And like, would you like to sing this song? And I'm like, uh, no. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, how oh, come? yeah. Oh, yeah. My first, um, I thought was a song. I used, I sent to, it was a American songwriting competition. It was a contest. And it's still it's still around today. So I, I wrote a song. I thought it was a song. Uh, they and they replied to me and said, "This is not a song. Uh -huh. It has no structure. <laughs> it has no meaning." So I, I was crushed. I was like, "Oh wow, okay." So you know, but I took what they said. That, you know, and I said, "He said it has no structure." I'm like, "Okay, a song has structure." So I went and started getting books and reading on the structure of writing the song, the different forms and. <clears throat> excuse me, different techniques of writing songs. So, wow. you know, so I can build a really, you know, constructed song. Wow. So it, it, it's at this stage, I mean, as I said, you're writing poetry. What was the theme of the poetry um, that you, you, you'd write about? <laughs> I'd write about anything. I think the first one I wrote about was um, Leo's, the um, the signs. And I would <laughs> write about anything. <laughs> You know, I mean, I was what in high school back then, so I would write about anything. Oh goodness! I mean, and because I I know later, I mean, because when I think about especially your first album, there's a big theme about love, which mm -hmm. which which we'll get into and stuff. But so from that letter, and and uh, you you started to study. When did you think I actually wanted to go into the industry as different from your playing and writing? Well, I always wanted to, I love the, the studio, the recording studio. So still back, you know, in my hometown, I, I was, you know, at the same time, you know, I started um, singing and playing in local bands and I was a keyboard player and the singer, background singer in, in the local bands. And, and I was still, you know, trying to write my songs. And I, I finally got one band to play a song that I wrote. <laughs> and <laughs> so, so I wanted to record it. And so I, you know, again, went to my family, please, can you give me some money? I want to go to the recording studio. <laughs> and they were looking at me like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with this girl? But they gave me the money. And so I, I uh, booked a studio for, you know, a couple hours or so. And we went in the studio and recorded the song. And I just fell in love with the big board and the speakers and everything. And I, I wanted to do that. So, you know, that's where, um, you know, my love for just creating music and being, you know, in, in the, I guess, the beginning stages of a song. Just, you know, that's my first love is just being in the studio creating. Yeah, you know, it. You know, for, for us as music fans who have no music talent, when we see the recording engineer with a massive ball with switches, we wonder how does it make sense? But when you mm -hmm. got in, you just felt like, wow, this feels like a place where you'd want to spend time in. Yeah, it, I felt like I belonged there, but I had no clue what he was doing. Okay. So, <laughs> so I would just sit and I, and I would watch. And I would just watch and, and, and I would ask questions. But back then, it was like, you don't touch the board. You don't do anything to the board. You just sing your part and you go back over and sit in your corner or wherever and let the engineer do his thing. But I would just sit there and watch everything he did, everything. And I would listen to what they were saying. And that's how I learned a lot, just you know, being in the studio, being in the atmosphere. I remember watching um, an interview with Barry Gordy and he said that that was what Michael Jackson was like when mm. everyone else was playing. He was just in the studio, just listening and watching and, yeah. and learning and stuff. Yeah, you learn a lot that way. You pick up a lot, you know, and having some idea of the way things work. And if you hear it and you see the engineer applying it to whatever you're working on, then you go back home and try it. It makes more sense. Wow. 
you yeah. know what's what strikes me is is how because you talked about getting and um, getting your parents to get you a, a piano and then getting you paying helping you pay for your recording said for all this time it's were they really supportive of yeah you know we, feel, we know our daughter has a gift or what was it like because it was as straightforward as that well my parents i love them dearly they were just so supportive whatever we did they just supported us Wow. You know, it's five of us. And they as long as we stayed out of trouble, they supported us. Wow. So they supported everything that we did that was constructive. So that wasn't an issue. But it had to make sense. You know, if if you know, I couldn't ask for some craziness and they knew I wouldn't um keep up with it or or you know follow through with what I promised. But I kept I promise, I'm like, I promise you I'm gonna write a song, you're gonna love it. I promise you, you gotta <laughs> Oh my! They were so sweet. I re- <laughs> I remember my mom. She would be so tired coming home because we we our family owned a soul food restaurant in Rochester, New York, wow. and she would be so tired when she came in at night. And um, and I was like, Ma, listen to this new song I just wrote. <laughs> and she's like, All right, baby, let me hear it. So I'm just playing my little. It was a cassette tape, right? <laughs> And I'm just playing my little song and so excited. My mom was going to listen to my music. And I looked over, mom was asleep. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, she supported me. My mom and dad, they supported me. Wow. Yeah. Did. yeah. Did, did, did you then go to 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 um, further your education in music? Or uh, was that in high school or college? College. Well, in um, high school as well, I studied um uh, um, flute and I played in, in the high school band so you had to learn in the marching band Okay. <clears throat> me. so you had to learn how to read the music you know playing in the band and um, so it started there well, it didn't really start there but it continued because <clears throat> excuse me I studied I took private lessons and, and, I, and you had to learn how to read the music so from there I went to college and then I studied the theory of music wow yeah so it continued. And, and it, did you get the chance then when you're studying the theory of music to study engineering as well, or is it just mainly the, the, the... Yeah, it was just a theory. It was just a theory of music. But once I um, started traveling back and forth to New York and working in the big studios with um, engineers, that's when I really started um, learning about the boards and, and the different things you know how to run the board again they won't let you touch the board but you're sitting (laughs) in the room (laughs) you're sitting in the room and I'm just absorbing everything wow I mean so I I mean when you're in college did you then think I actually want to be a recording artist or what what was your what was on your horizon your vision my vision was to be a songwriter oh just oh yeah to be the songwriter you have to write songs and, and to see my thing was I just wanted to be in the recording studio that was still just my thing just want to write songs and be in the recording studio yeah you know? uh-huh. and I, you know and I love to travel so I figured okay I can write songs and travel so you know <laughs> that at that time that's what I'm thinking you know <laughs> did, did, did in in did they teach you as well um in college the the understanding how songwriters get paid and all this all those nits and cracks no no no, that's a totally different thing that's like (laughs) the business of music okay yeah that's the business of music um the theory is just really it the theory of music how to you know how uh, you would build a song or a sound yeah you know how the you know the circle of fifths and the chord progressions and in the staffs and different things like that you're actually studying about the music okay